Let's dive right in, shall we? Jane, Emma, and Carla are working out in a gym. One of them isn't being careful enough. Who is it? It's Carla. Look, she's doing exercises while chewing gum. She could accidentally choke on it. Look at Matt and Olivia. They're both cooking dinner. Matt is using a stove, and Olivia is using a grill outside. Which of them is doing something wrong? It's Matt. He forgot to turn the stove on. Nor was a married man, and his wife had a twin sister. One day, the twins decided to trick him. They both pretended to be his wife to see if he'd find the right person. Unfortunately, Noor got way too confused. Can you find his real wife? Look at the wedding picture of Noor and his wife. She has a tattoo on her right arm. So his wife must be the woman on the left who also has a tattoo on her right arm. Willem and Sean were caught by the police close to the graffiti that had just appeared on a building. One of them painted it, but both denied doing anything. Who do you think is lying? It was Willem. Look, there's some paint on her hands and shirt. Drake and Thor are both on vacation. Drake is skiing in the mountains with his girlfriend, and Thor is surfing with his best friend. Look at them now. Which one of them is in danger? Drake! He's screaming in the mountains. It's not safe because it can cause an avalanche. Now, let's find some pet owners. For example, look at these three girls. Can you figure out who the cat belongs to? Its owner is the girl on the right. Look at her legs and hands. She has some scratches. Very typical for cat owners. Now, there are three people sitting in the park. See that dog playing there? Who does it belong to? To the guy in the middle. Look, he has a leash. These guys, Ian, Noah, and Luke, are basketball players. They're getting ready for the game in the changing room. Which of them is Noah? It must be this guy. The one who's not wearing shoes. Look, his shoes are in the locker with the name tag Noah. Esme was walking in the forest and got lost. She had been wandering for hours until she came across a witch's house. The witch was busy with a new spell and had a riddle for Esme. If the girl managed to solve it, the witch would let her go. If Esme failed, she'd have to stay with the witch forever. So the witch had six test tubes. The first three were empty, and the last three were full. For the spell, full and empty tubes had to alternate. Esme had to solve this problem, but she could only touch one tube. How can she do it? Esme should take the fifth tube and pour the liquid from it into the second one. A bank was robbed on a Friday evening. There were no customers and no signs of a break-in, which meant it was one of the bank employees. The robbery was discovered by the bank director, Mr. Perry. There were three main suspects, Ms. Cott, Mr. Mendez, and Ms. Morgan. All of them denied being anywhere close to the safe. But one of them lied. Who was it? Pay attention to the footprints. 
These must belong to Mr. Perry. But there's another pair, which must be heels. Mr. Mendez is wearing sneakers, and Miss Morgan is wearing flats. Miss Cott is the only one wearing heels. The footprints are likely to be hers. So she lied. Mrs. Nichols has four daughters and a son. The oldest daughter's name is April. She's an artist. The second daughter is December. She's into sports. Her third daughter is August, and she's keen on cooking. May is the fourth one, and she likes reading. Their brother Adam is the youngest in the family. How is his name connected to his sister's? The first letters of the girls' names make up the name Adam. Another family riddle for you. Ava is Bella's sister, Bella is Ella's sister, and Ella is Ruby's mother. Who is Ruby for Ava? If Ava is Bella's sister and Bella is Ella's sister, it seems like the three of them are sisters. Since Ruby is Ella's daughter, then both Ava and Bella are Ruby's aunts. So Ruby is Ava's niece. Take a look at these friends at the beach. Which of them is a robot? It must be this girl. Look, it's very hot outside and everyone is sweating, except her. That's kind of odd. The police also broke into three apartments. In one of them, a robot lives. Can you guess where? Look, there's a lot of machine oil in the bathroom. I'll bet it belongs to the robot. What about this photo? Can you spot a robot here? It's summer, and everyone is wearing shorts and tops. Except for this guy. He's wearing long pants, a long sleeve shirt, and even gloves. He must be hiding his body. I'd say it's him. Here's a photo of people sitting in a cafe. Can you spot a robot here? It must be this lady, since she's not drinking or eating anything. Guess why? Well, robots can't eat human food, obviously. Another peek into some people's houses. One room belongs to a robot, but which one? It must be this one. Look, there's a whole bunch of bolts and spare parts in the wardrobe. Have a look at this group of friends. Can you tell which of them is a robot? It must be this guy. There's some steam and sparks coming from it. Perhaps it's a robot that needs some renovations. Aiko has won a game show, and she can finally get her prize. But there's a catch. One last task. There are three boxes, and she can pick one to take with her. One box is filled with $100 bills. Another box contains 5-cent coins. And the last box has both bills and coins. The boxes look exactly the same, and the girl can't touch any of them. The boxes have labels. Bills on the left one, coins in the middle one, and bills and coins on the right one. All the boxes are labeled wrong. Aiko can't look inside any of the boxes, but she can ask for one sample from any box. What should Aiko's strategy be to identify the box filled with bills only? Since all the boxes are labeled wrong, Aiko should ask for a sample from the bills and coins box. If there's a bill there, then that's the one she needs. She should simply take it. If there's a coin, then it's the box with coins. 
In that case, the remaining boxes contain bills and bills with coins. And since the labels are incorrect, the one with bills is the one marked with the label coins. The day that is tomorrow for the day after tomorrow is as far away from Wednesday as the day that is yesterday for the day before yesterday. So, what day is it today? The tomorrow for the day after tomorrow and the yesterday for the day before yesterday are exactly three days away from today. If they're equally far away from Wednesday, then today is Wednesday. Meadow loved animals and she decided to get some frogs. She talked to her mom about it and they made a decision. Only one of these three statements is correct. 1. Meadow got at least one frog. 2. Meadow got at least five frogs. 3. Meadow got fewer than five frogs. How many frogs did Meadow get? So, only one statement is correct. If it's the first one, then the other two must be wrong. In this case, she can't get five or more frogs, so it doesn't work. If the second statement is correct, then she has at least five frogs. But then the first statement is automatically correct, too. Let's say the third statement is correct, so she got fewer than five frogs. Automatically, the second statement is wrong. But for the first statement to be wrong, too, she should have got fewer than one frog. So it seems that, after talking to her mom, Meadow got zero frogs. Maybe instead, her mom got her a dog, which would at least rhyme. Now, Rosie and Peter are having a date. Both of them are pathological liars. The waiter asks their ages. Peter says, I'm definitely not over 30. Rosie replies, I'm 28, and Peter is at least 5 years older than me. Peter adds, nah, Rosie is at least 29. Can you figure out their actual ages? Since we know that all statements are false, let's assume the opposite. Peter is definitely over 30. Rosie is not 28, and she's at most 4 years older than Peter. And Rosie is at most 28. Now, from the first statement, we can conclude that Peter is at least 31 years old. The second and third statements tell us that Rosie is younger than 28. We also know that the maximum gap between their ages is 4 years. Therefore, Peter is 31 years old and Rosie is 27. Rosie arrives home from her date and makes herself a cup of hot chocolate. Suddenly, a soccer ball crashes through her window and breaks the mug. Rosie looks out the window just in time. She sees three neighbors running across the backyard, the Smith brothers. Their names are Miles, Mark, and Mike. The next morning, Rosie finds a note in her mailbox. It says this. Which one of the Smith brothers should Rosie question? The note reads, question mark Smith. Therefore, Rosie should blame Mark. Mark apologizes to Rosie. She replies, I'm going to forgive you if you crack my riddle. Mm. So listen carefully. I came first on earth, but second in heaven. I also come twice a week, but just once in a year. I stay away for months, but you can find me in February. What am I? Can you help Mark solve this puzzle? The correct answer is the letter E. And for extra credit, will Rosie the liar actually forgive Mark? <laughs> Someone robbed Rosie's house yesterday. She called the police and they questioned her neighbors. Billy said, eh, yesterday I was visiting my parents' house in another state. I just got back. Phil said, for safety reasons, I had to spend last night in a hotel room. Construction workers urgently repaired my roof during the night. Thankfully, they finished by this morning. Meanwhile, Chuck replied, eh, Sorry, I was playing video games with my friends, so I didn't notice anything suspicious at all. Who is lying?
fill. The roof reconstruction should have been finished, but it still looks like a mess. Ooh. Rosie wants to win a college sports grant, so she trains very hard every day. Take a look at her rivals. Can you predict who's going to win this particular competition? The left runner will be the first to cross the finish line. The right guy's shoelaces came undone. Meanwhile, Rosie, who's running in the middle, put her hand on her stomach because she's struggling with a cramp. That's why her chances of winning are low. The next day, Rosie buys chocolates on the way to the gym. She can't eat them in front of the others because their coach, Tina, asks all runners to stay away from sugar products. So Rosie decides to hide the chocolates in her locker. During the break, she opens her locker and finds out that the chocolates are gone. She questions four teammates. Karen says, I was washing my hair in the shower. Mm. Kelly replies, I was talking to my boyfriend on FaceTime, and he can confirm that. Mm. Zoe discussed her skills with Tina during the break. And Nina enjoyed her sugar-free salad. Who's lying? It's Karen. Her hair is dry. What? Rosie is walking home from her training late at night. Suddenly, she sees a sad young lady sitting at a bus stop. The lady got wet in the rain, and the buses are no longer running. Rosie feels sorry for her and says, My home is nearby. Would you like to have a cup of hot tea? The lady agrees. As soon as they enter her home, Rosie turns the light on. That's when she realizes that her guest is very dangerous. How? The lady's legs are covered with wool hair. Take a look at the sky. It's a full moon. She will soon turn into a werewolf. Rosie arrives at work, so we can assume she survived the night. Unfortunately, someone locks her in the underground parking. She wanders around for a while and finds three ways out. But only one path is safe. Hungry tigers are hiding behind the first door. It's impossible to get through. The second door is guided by a virtual voice assistant reprogrammed to hate people. It threatens to destroy anyone who enters this door. And the third passage is filled with toxic gas that makes all mammals pass out immediately. Which door should Rosie choose? The second one. Those threats are words. At the end of the day, it's just a voice assistant. Rosie discovers an infinite supply of honey. But she only has a one 5-gallon jar and one 3-gallon jar. She needs to measure out exactly 4 gallons of honey, taking as few steps as possible. Can you help her out? Yep, this can be done in six steps. 1. Fill the 5-gallon jar fully. 2. Now pour the honey from the 5-gallon jar into the 3-gallon jar. After that, you still have 2 gallons of honey in the bigger jar. 3. Now empty the 3-gallon jar. 4. Transfer the 2 gallons of honey into the 3-gallon jar. 5. Fill up the bigger jar again. 6. And finally, transfer one gallon from the five-gallon jar into the smaller jar. This way, we'll end up having four gallons of honey in the bigger jar. Rosie goes to a local restaurant. The manager offers her free dinner. But first, she has to solve his tricky riddle. Rosie agrees. Here's the task. You throw me out when you want to use me. And you take me in when you don't want to use me. Who am I? Rosie nails it right away. Can you solve this mystery too? The correct answer is an anchor. Now, Rosie has 26 blue socks, 13 green socks, 33 pink socks, and 12 red socks. She keeps them in her drawer. 
how many socks would she have to pull out in the dark to make sure she had a matching pair? The correct answer is 5. She only has 4 colors in her collection, so 5 socks will guarantee that 2 of them will be in the same color. Hey, great job! Rosie has 4 siblings, Alex, Sarah, Nina, and Willow. All 5 receive some gifts from their relatives on Christmas Day. Rosie opens 25 gifts, while her brother Alex, only 24. Meanwhile, Sarah opens 8 gifts. And Nina, only one gift. Can you predict how many gifts Willow would open? The last name in Rosie's name is Y. It's the 25th letter of the alphabet. Alex's last letter X is in the 24th place. The last letter in the name Sarah is H. It's the 8th letter of the alphabet. And so on. Similar odd logic also works for Willow. The letter W is 23rd. Therefore, she will open 23 gifts. Now, if I were Sarah, I might complain about only getting a third of the gifts her siblings get. But I'm not. Rosie is looking through her granny's pictures. Suddenly, she gets chills because she noticed a time traveler among these party guys. Can you spot this person too? This picture is from the 70s, but this guy on the left has a modern cell phone in his pocket. He's definitely not from this era. Rosie wants to get into her boyfriend's apartment building to prepare a surprise for his birthday. Unfortunately, she has forgotten the five-digit code, but she still remembers these five clues. The sum of the fifth number and the third number is 14. The fourth number is one more than the second. The first number is one less than twice the second number. The sum of the second number and the third number equal 10. And finally, the sum of all five numbers is 30. Can you help her crack the code? The correct code is 74658. Here's some simple math to explain it. Alan is a famous scientist. He invented a special potion that awakens superpowers in humans. One night, he was having a secret Zoom conference with his colleagues. Alan's assistant, Betty, entered the office and brought him some coffee. In a while, Alan said goodbye to his colleagues and fired Betty. Why? She poured poison into his mug Alan saw her reactions because the front camera on his laptop was working. Later that day, Alan went to the basement where he kept his secret invention. Unfortunately, someone broke into his safe and stole the potion. Alan interrogated three of his co-workers in the building. Will said, Sorry bro, I've spent the last 24 hours watching rats for my research. Peter said, I didn't even know they had a basement. You're full of surprises, man. And Diana said, I think we heard weird noises from your office two hours ago. Who stole the potion? Peter. Take a look at his legs. He's levitating. When Peter was exposed, he took off into the sky and escaped. Alan headed to the parking lot, but someone had stolen his car. He called the police and found it across the street. The thief hit a tree and escaped. The police interviewed three suspects. Lily said, I'm a courier. I came here to deliver food for the lab workers. Nina said, I'm from a cleaning company. I'm here to clean, not steal cars. Bob said, I parked my car to get some coffee. I didn't see any crimes. Can you guess who stole the car? Nina, look at her watch, it's broken, and the black glass fragments are still in the car. Alan came home. Someone broke into his house and stole a laptop with secret information. 
Alan interrogated three of his neighbors. Rosie said, You might think I'm crazy, but I saw a flying man outside your house. Nick said, I spent all day in the garden picking apples. I didn't see anything suspicious. And Zoe said, I was at a shopping mall with a friend and just arrived. Who lied? Zoe said that she had been shopping but didn't carry any bags. Suspicious, but possible. Meanwhile, Nick said that he'd been picking apples, but all the apples in the garden are still on the trees. So the liar is Nick. Alan went to the airport to take a flight to Argentina. He wanted to consult with his colleagues about Peter, but there were a lot of people who wanted to fly away too. Online booking stopped working, so there was a long queue. Alan is the 20th from the bottom in a line of 100 passengers. What's his position at the top of the queue? The position of passengers standing higher in the queue is 100 minus 20 equals 80. Therefore, Alan's position from the top is 80 plus 1 equals 81. After purchasing a ticket, Alan headed to the public toilet. A woman stopped him at the entrance and said, Sir, can you please tell my husband to hurry up? His boss is calling him and it's urgent. Alan agreed, went into the toilet and looked at the stalls. He found the woman's husband right away just by looking at his feet. What about you? The guy on the left is her husband. They have similar tattoos. Finally, Alan got on a plane and flew from New York to Argentina. It took him 10 and a half hours to reach the final destination. After spending three days in Argentina, Alan flew back home. However, it took 630 minutes this time, even though the plane flew at the same speed. Can you guess why? Ten and a half hours are the same as 630 minutes. After getting home, Alan noticed Peter running away through the backyard. Alan followed him, but Peter was too fast. Suddenly, Alan saw his motorbike in the parking lot. He questioned four people standing nearby. Hey guys, whose motorbike is this? I need to borrow it. But all four people replied, it's mine. Alan took a closer look at the vehicle and quickly figured out the owner. What about you? The third guy is the owner. He's the only person who's not wearing or holding a helmet. His helmet is attached to the bike. Alan hit the road. He wanted to get to his lab to make an antidote for Peter as soon as possible. There are four possible ways to get there. Can you guess which way is the shortest? The fourth one. The trick to solving this maze quickly is to start drawing from the end. Someone filled Alan's lab with sleeping gas. He passed out and woke up in a creepy basement. Alan found four doors leading outside. He has only one chance to escape. He won't be able to use the doors again. Behind the first door, there's a water-filled room swarming with sharks. The second door leads to the room filled with a spider's web. The third door hides a space where scorpions are falling from the ceiling. And the fourth door is hiding hungry lions. Which door is more or less safe to enter? Alan should choose the second door. Although crawling through spiderwebs might be gross, he'll be okay. Alan arrived at Peter's house. Peter lives with two roommates, his friend Sam and his brother George. Can you guess which one of these bedrooms belongs to Peter? George is the only one who's holding a laptop in his hands. Therefore, his bedroom is the first room that doesn't have a laptop. See this pillow with red hair in the third room? 
It looks just like Sam's hair color, so it's probably his bedroom. Therefore, Peter lives in the second room. Peter apologized to Alan for stealing his invention and asked him not to call the police. Alan offered Peter to play a game. He gave Peter 100 pills, 50 red and 50 blue, and two empty boxes. Alan said, I will leave the room for a while, and I'll need you to place all the pills in two boxes. When I come back, I'll draw a pill from any of the two boxes, and if the pill's blue, I'll forgive you. Keep in mind that no box can be empty, and you gotta place all 100 pills in one of the two boxes. Good luck! How can Peter raise his chances of winning? He should put one blue pill in one box and the other 99 pills in the second box. This way, the chances are 50-50. The next day, Alan decided to explore an abandoned hospital. One week ago, the locals reported some strange sounds coming from this house and some people saw a ghost wearing a wedding dress. As soon as he entered the building, he heard screams from the attic. Alan walked upstairs and found a wedding dress in a closet nearby. The music speaker replayed creepy sounds over and over again. Alan found three neighbors and asked them one similar question. What did you do one week ago? Chuck said, I was on a business trip in London for a month. I came back today. Sarah said, this dress is not mine. I got married in a red one. It suits me much more. And Wendy said, I'm a doctor. I had many duties in the hospital that day. Who's lying? Sarah. Alan didn't mention the dress, but she started making excuses anyway. Peter was fond of collecting rare coins. When he was 20 years old, he bought a special box to collect his coins. On his every birthday, he put 250 coins in the box. Meanwhile, his sister, who was also fond of collecting coins, took out 50 coins from Peter's box on her birthday. Peter was very surprised at his 60th anniversary when he opened his box. There were only 500 coins inside. How can this be possible? Peter was born on February 29th, thus he put 250 coins every 4 years. In 40 years, he put the coins in only 10 times, making a total of 2,500 coins. His sister was born on any other day, and she took out 50 coins from the box 40 times, which means she took out 2,000 items. Therefore, after 40 years, Peter's box only had 500 coins. Today, I'm going to test your attention to detail with short but tricky puzzles. Do you have what it takes to find all the oddities in them? Let's check! You can see two women in the elevator. One works in this building, while the other came here for an interview. Can you guess which one works here? The woman on the right has a name tag on her jacket, while the one on the left has none. Can you spot an odd pineapple here? It's this one in the corner. It has three leaves, while all the rest have four. Okay, let's make it harder this time. Do you notice anything weird in this picture? Hurry up! A tap coming right out of the tree doesn't look right, and a purple coconut looks sort of off, right? You've got three desserts before you, but only one of them is safe to eat. Can you choose the right one? The strawberries with whipped cream may seem delicious, but those tiny flies scream that this dessert is off. Next, you've got a muffin but there's a worm in the cherries on top of that muffin. So, ice cream is the safest option. Now let's see how sharp your eyes are. How many numbers can you see?
The numbers on the screen are 1, 2, 3, 7, 5, 0, 8, 6, 9. Look at these three paintings and try to tell which one is fake. The second one. It's labeled as having been painted in 1950, but there's a lion looking at a smartphone in it. How could there be smartphones back then? You're lost in the woods, cold, and so very hungry. Suddenly, you walk out to a clearing where you see three cozy-looking houses. Check your survivor's instinct. Which one do you think is safe to enter? The house on the left has a big lock on its door, and its windows are boarded up. There's just no way you can get in. The second house looks safe at first glance, but look at the snow. Bear footprints are leading to its porch. It wouldn't be nice to become a dinner for a hungry bear now, so your safest bet would be the third house. Who's not very smart out of these two guys? Well, giving your cat a wash from time to time isn't that bad, although the kitty sure wouldn't like it. So the guy on the left is doing fine. As for the one on the right, look at the pet food package in his hands. He's giving his dog cat's food. This stuff shouldn't be confused. Can you spot what's wrong with this image? The woman sitting in the armchair has two different slippers on her feet. The painting on the wall seems to be from two different time periods at once. Hmm. There's a Victorian-era man with a digital camera hanging from a strap on his neck. Which of these three pictures has something wrong in it? The second one. The girl in it is eating her soup with a fork. One of the kids in the picture snuck out of the bedroom through the window at night and came back. Who was it? The one in the lower right corner still has their shoes on. One of these people going abroad is suspicious. Who? The woman on the right is going to Indonesia, but she's got a warm coat and a scarf packed in her suitcase. Are you willing to bet who's going to win in this rope pulling contest? If you placed your bet on the right-hand team, you've got it. There's more than one person on their side. They're just hidden outside the frame. Can you figure out how many interviews this guy already attended this month? Oh, no. He's done five out of six. There are six post-it notes on the calendar, but a little movable square indicates the current date is on the 26th. His next interview is on the 28th. This room has something wrong, but I can't see it. Can you? There's a bird in the fish tank. Which hand is the odd one out? It's the third one. The only right hand here. The rest are lefts. There are three people in the science lab, but one of them is not who they want the others to believe they are. Who is it? It's the guy on the right. He's wearing a fake ID badge on his lab coat. This hall is full of extravagantly dressed guests, but one of them is more extravagant than the rest. They're a ghost. Can you spot them? Look at the woman on the left. Her feet are almost transparent. She must be the ghost. 
This one will require both your observation skills and logic. Which of the two teapots can hold more tea? The one on the left is taller, but the one on the right is broader, so they can hold an equal amount of tea. Still, the taller one also has its nose at the same level as the broader one, which won't allow it to be filled to the brim, so the right teapot can hold more tea. Which one of these three people came to this cafe not alone? It's the girl behind the table in the middle. She has two cups of tea in front of her. One of these three partygoers has recently escaped prison and hasn't gotten rid of all the evidence. Can you figure out who it is? It's the guy on the right. He still has handcuffs hanging from one of his hands. An art exhibition owner has sold a painting to a private collector. He said it was a work of an unknown 18th century artist. But the next day, the disgruntled buyer returned the picture to the exhibition owner and demanded his money back. Can you tell why by looking at the picture? Well, there shouldn't be an airplane in the painting if it was genuinely from the 18th century. Someone broke into a house in a rich neighborhood and got away with a lot of valuables. The police had a suspect and stopped by his home. The suspect said he hadn't left his home since the day before, but the police officers knew he was lying. Can you guess why? Look at the helmet on the bike's handlebar. It's upside down. Since it was raining so hard, it would have been already filled with water to the brim if it hadn't been hanging like this since the day before. A police officer approached a man sitting in a car parked next to a hotel's front door and issued a parking ticket. Hmm. The man was outraged, saying he'd been there for no more than two minutes, and the sign said five minutes of staying was allowed. Still, the officer was adamant that the man wasn't telling the truth. Why? There had been a heavy snowfall and just too much snow on the man's car hood and roof. If he had arrived just two minutes before, the snow would have been blown away by the wind or melted. There are three passports before you, but only two of them are real. Which one is fake and why? The right one is fake. Passport photos should be taken against a white background, and this one has something else in it. Which of these two people here is asking for trouble? Surfing is not the safest of sports, but if this girl is a professional surfer, she's fine. <laughs> the man with loud music coming out of his speaker isn't safe though. Loud sounds such as shouting or music can cause an avalanche in the mountains. Jason says he's just returned from a trip to Antarctica and he's showing his friends photographs taken there. They seem all right, but one of Jason's friends thinks he's lying. Why? Look at Jason's face. He has tan lines from the sunglasses. Emma came to the office on Monday and found out that someone had deleted an important report from her computer. She knew that in the company, there were three people who would be happy if she lost her job. Emma loved reading detective novels and even wanted to become a private detective when she was younger. That's why she knew she had to question the suspects. Laura, Emma's colleague, said, I've just arrived. Phew, the weather is awful. Such a downpour. Why are you asking me? Thomas, the accountant, answered, I was out getting coffee and I just returned. And Elisa, a new employee, said, I had a meeting with a client in a cafe. I've just come back to the office. Who might have anything to do with Emma's report?
Eliza, pay attention to the suspect's feet. Thomas's and Laura's shoes are wet. They got caught in the rain, but Eliza's high heels are perfectly dry. She must have lied about going out to meet with a client. Emma found this strange. To confirm her suspicions, she decided to watch Eliza. But the very next day, the girl disappeared, along with some very important documents. Emma's boss asked her to help him return the documents. He didn't want to inform the police yet. Despite all, Emma was happy. She could fulfill her dream of becoming a detective. Eliza's computer was protected with a password. After an hour of failed attempts, Emma finally noticed a piece of paper on the floor under Eliza's desk. She picked it up. I'm made up of two words joined together. I'm a dish. My first half is a famous genre. My second part is a grain. What am I? The answer to this riddle might be the password, but what is it? Popcorn. Emma managed to start the computer, and soon enough, she found a map with some coordinates. Time for some action. The map led her to a modern building. It was a gym. She entered and asked the receptionist about Eliza, but the woman refused to tell her anything unless she brought a guest pass. Once inside, Emma decided to explore the place. At one point, she entered the showers for ladies. She immediately realized something was off. But what exactly? See that man reflected in the window? Who is he? And what is he doing here? Emma was about to run out of the showers when everything went black. When she woke up some time later, she realized she was in a small room without windows. There was a door with a combination lock. In her hand, she was clutching a note. Spelled forward were those rodents that terrify you. But what you need is spelled backward. You can't touch it, but you can see it at night. What is the password? The rodents the note speaks about are rats. Then the word Emma needs is star. The girl managed to open the door. She rushed out of the room but stopped abruptly. She saw a large armchair. A man was sitting in it. It was the man from the showers at the gym. Here you are, he exclaimed cheerfully. I admit that at first I wanted to bring your boss down, but I've changed my mind. I want to play now. If you crack all my riddles, I'll give you the documents and let you go. Emma had nothing to do but agree. The man said, See, I have a room filled with gold. Once, three thieves sneaked into that room, but only two of them walked out. After they left, the room was empty. So, where was the third thief? The third criminal was in a wheelchair. He didn't walk. He rolled out of the room. Good job, the man shouted and pressed some buttons on the armrest of his chair. Emma screamed as she felt herself falling through the floor. It was pitch dark in the basement. Suddenly, a torch on the wall lit up. Emma saw three doors. Behind the first door, there was a dense jungle full of dangerous creatures. Behind the second door, there was a gigantic fire-breathing dinosaur whose breath could burn through any kind of material. And behind the third door, there was a lake filled with ice water. The water was so cold, it needed just a few seconds to freeze literally anything. Which door should Emma choose? She should walk through the second door. Even if dinosaurs were still around, they wouldn't be able to breathe fire. It was the correct decision. The dino turned out to be a skillfully made statue. But there was just one door leading out of the room, and it was locked too. Ah! Emma was starting to get impatient. Luckily, there was another note with a hint. There were drawings on it. A banana, a sunflower, a rainbow, and an apple. Emma thought for a while, then pressed four numbers on the panel near the door. The code was correct, and the door opened. What numbers did the girl press? Wow. 
1371. Each digit corresponds to the number of colors of the objects in the picture. Emma saw a long corridor. She'd been walking for a while when she realized that the corridor was about to split into three passageways. They were signed West, East, South. She also saw this inscription on the wall. Which corridor should she choose? Emma tilted her head and looked at the inscription upside down. This way, it read South. That's where she needed to go. Soon, the girl saw three doors on her way. On the floor, there were three keys that could open these three doors. What is the biggest number of attempts she will need to figure out the key for each door? Six, three attempts for the first key and all three doors. Two attempts for the second key and the remaining two doors. And one attempt for the third key and the last door. Emma decided to go through the left door. And guess what? She ended up in the room with the armchair again. The man was there too. He asked her, Today is Friday. You need to do something 72 days later. What day of the week will it be? Emma understood it really fast, it would be Sunday. Look, 72 days equals 10 weeks plus two days. And two days from Friday, that's Sunday. The man was getting irritated. Well, and how good are you at math? Look at this sequence. What are the next two numbers? The next two numbers should be 20 and 28. There are two groups of numbers in this sequence. 11, 14, and 17, and 19, 22, and 25. In both of them, each next number is three more than the previous one. It means that in the first group, the next number is 20, and in the second group, 28. Then, the man offered Emma a bet. He said he would put one red and one blue marble in a box. If the girl picked a blue marble, he would let her go. But if she got the red marble, she would have to stay and help him around the house for a year. Emma knew that the man was going to cheat, because why would he take a risk like that? He would probably put two red marbles instead of one red and one blue. But how can she prove it? After thinking for a while, she managed to win the bet. How did she do it? Emma picked a marble and quickly put it in her mouth without showing it to the man. The marble that remained in the box was red. According to the rules, it meant that the marble Emma had chosen was blue. The man didn't want to admit that he had tried to cheat. Okay, I'm not going to go back on my word, but here's the last riddle. If you crack it, you're free to go. How can you turn six into an odd number? Emma didn't need to think much. She removed the letter S, which left IX. That's the number 9 in Roman numerals. And this number is odd. The man could do nothing. He gave Emma the documents and let her go. The girl was happy. Do you think she should pursue the career of a detective?